COVID-19 has affected every sector across the globe, and the hospitality industry is among the hardest hit. The industry felt the impact when the federal government shot the economy in April. Hotels are not considered among essential service providers. For this reason, they were mostly shut down, except for the few that were used as isolation centers. Area Senior Vice President, Middle East and Africa at Radisson Hotel Group, Tim Corden, joins us now to share his expert insights on how COVID-19 has forever changed the industry. Thank you very much, Tim, for joining us. What has been your major challenge for uh, the hospitality business uh, since the lockdown uh, had been eased? Well, restarting businesses has been quite challenging, as I'm sure you can imagine. First and foremost, we have to remember that this was a, a very human and humanitarian crisis that we needed to deal with sensitively. So looking after our, our guests and our teams has, has always been our absolute top priority, and it remains so. So one of the things we did to try and build consumer confidence and to restart business in a more normal way was partner with a company called SGS, who are very keen and very de in a detailed way auditing exactly what protocols we have in our hotels to ensure the cleanliness and the hygiene levels are correct and that our hotels remain COVID free. Um, so that's one step that we've taken to, to try and return to some kind of new normal. How have you reassured customers that it is safe to use the hotel space again, considering fears of a reinfection and all of that? Well, we think we've come up with 20 protocols for all of our hotels globally that really encapsulate the right level of safety and security. And as I say, hygiene using the correct chemicals. But, and that's being audited in a very detailed way, uh, as I mentioned earlier, including swabs of hard surfaces to make sure that they're COVID free. So we think we've gone really above and beyond to provide a very safe environment, but one that still provides a great experience because we need to remember as hoteliers, as hospitality professionals, uh, what we like to do is, is provide people with an enjoyable time and a memorable experience. And we think we've found a way to do that whilst keeping things uh, very, very safe indeed. And to speak to that, you know, we've, we've really managed to maintain uh, more than 90% of our hotels in the Middle East and Africa open throughout the lockdown, open and trading um, throughout this, uh, this very difficult time. And despite that, we haven't had any um, cluster or community outbreaks within any of our hotels so far. So I think that shows that we're doing the right things uh, at the moment. Are there some innovations or should I say, what are some of the innovations uh, that you have implemented since the whole uh, lockdown situation uh, came up to help uh, the hotel chain? Well, there's been a number of them. Um, firstly, we, we had to look at uh, how we operated the businesses because uh, the, the first catastrophe, if you like, for our business was that there was no revenue or very little revenue. So how do you stop that revenue plan from becoming a, a liquidity crisis, which of course it did immediately, and then stop that liquidity crisis from becoming a solvency crisis? So protecting the businesses has been um, the thread that's run throughout all of it with the ethos of protecting our teams, because the greatest asset that any hotel has are the people that actually work in that hotel. They're the people who provide the experiences. So we've really tried to protect them as much as we we possibly can. And over and above that, yes, we've accelerated some of the plans we already had. Um, for example, online check-in and contactless check-in in certain hotels is something that's been welcomed by a number of guests. Should they choose to have that experience, there, there is still the option for a more traditional check-in in a very safe and secure way. Um, additionally, we've partnered with Zoom uh, to provide hybrid meeting rooms in a number of different locations so that you can have a small group of people uh, together in a very safe and socially distanced way and connecting digitally and virtually with another small group of people or multiple small groups of people. So you can have a, a successful event for uh, 60 or 100 people over eight or 10 different meeting rooms and eight or 10 different locations. So not only is this uh, a very effective way to utilize technology to make sure that you're still having a productive meeting, but it's also very cost effective because you aren't flying people around. So we think that's a trend that's here to stay and we welcome it and we embrace it with the with the with our partner Zoom to provide hybrid meetings in, in our hotels. I'm assuming all of these um, are capital intensive, uh, aside the fact that we know running hotel is uh, very cost effective, um, intensive rather. 
how did you keep afloat during the pandemic with all um, of you, most of your offices shut? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, hotels are very um, cost intensive businesses, but you know, one thing we had to, to start off with to look at was you know, no business plan in the world is successful with zero revenue. Um, so we knew we were going to have to take some, in some cases, some difficult decisions, but in other cases, some more creative ones. Um, and it was very much a hotel by hotel approach. And we have a number of hotel owners uh, across Africa and across the Middle East and all over the world who are <laughs> individual entrepreneurs. And we needed to partner with those guys and make sure that they understood exactly what was happening in their businesses and provide them with multiple options to be able to say, this is what we think is going to happen over the next three, six, nine, 12 months. And this is what the cash position looks like. So this is what we think we should do about that. And it's been an individual approach really with, with almost every single hotel. And as I say, the, the critical uh, success factor for that has been trying to retain our teams and trying not to dismantle anything that we've built over the last few years. Because when this pandemic does recede, and it will, um, we want to be able to be agile and come back to normal as quickly as possible and provide that fantastic service that customers are obviously familiar with from, from the pre-COVID travel era, I suppose. All right, Tim Gordon, thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to go. Take care.